Good morning, Southern California, AM 1220 KHTS. This is your host, Fred Arnold, on the Santa Clarita Valley Chamber of Commerce Business Spotlight. Uh, I'm with my friend Elaine Giftus Wright. I Hi. got that right. Gave him Giftus, right? Yes, Giftus Wright. Right, Very yes, good. Feng Shui good. expert. Uh, and talking about Feng Shui, and, and I know a little bit about it from our former interviews yes, uh, yes. and what I've read, but you know, some people don't know what Feng Shui is. What, what, right. what is it? Is it a religion or is it a philosophy? Uh, is it a, tell me more. I love that question, Fred, because I get it a lot. Is Feng Shui a religion? And it is not. It has nothing to do with religion. Feng Shui means wind and water. Feng Shui, wind and water. And basically, it's just working with the energy, the, the unseen energy of a home. Um, it has been around for thousands of years. It has nothing to do with any religious beliefs because my, my uh, um, clients are all over the world and they're all different be beliefs, religious beliefs. And, and once they understand that feng shui has nothing to do with anything that they may believe in, you know, spiritually, religiously, they're fine with it. And then it's just simply working with their home um, and organizing uh, organizing the home so the energy moves freely so their lives get better. And is it, would it be fair to say it creates balance? Oh, yes, balance. Because if you consider your home, here's our body, here's your body. We have physical bodies. But if you consider your home a second body, your other body, in other words, you go out into the world and you come home into a home, that's your second body. So what's going on in that home affects what's going out, out, out of the home. So it is very, very important to balance and harmonize your home so your life outside of your home gets better. Your health gets better. Your relationships get better. You're able to attract more uh, financial success. Uh, marriages are often, I often get uh, calls, oh, my marriage is so much happier and so much more passionate or mm -hmm. you know all those wonderful things that I love to hear after mm -hmm. work with clients mm -hmm. yeah and so, so it's, it's all about health and it's about home health yes. that affects your being if you will yes. it also affects those that are around you you know I want to get a little bit deeper and throw mm -hmm. some questions at you so more impromptu I questions um, let's talk about you walk up to a house front door okay um, tell me more about the front door and your entryway and what it means, because some people can't change exactly. necessarily their entryway. The house is built right, already. Right, and that's the, the other thing I want to really impress upon people is that we do not ask you to change anything. We do not ask you to change a door or not, uh, or, or you know, take a, your bathroom out or do anything dramatic. It's very, very simple. But what I will mainly look for at a front door is if when you're standing in your front door, you can see the street. Because many homes, you, you have like a walkway, and then it goes to the right, to the driveway, and then out to the street. So that means that you can't visually see the street. You can't see your main street. So consequently, you may be missing opportunities because you can't see them coming. Or on the other side of it, you may be, uh, adversity may be creeping up on you quickly before you see it, so you don't have time to really prepare for it. So a front door is very, very important. We love red doors because red doors create prosperity and okay. abundance, but okay. you don't have to paint your red door, your door red all the time. But it is, v the, the, the front door is where what we call the, ener the uh, mouth of chi, which is where the chi energy comes in. So it's very, very important to have that door healthy, being able to see the street. And if you can't, we have various ways of assisting that, you know, with, with a mirror in a certain place, nothing dramatic, very simple. But it's really important to be able to see your street from your door, front door, and also have a very healthy front door with, uh, you know, maybe certain flowers and not too many pointed plants that cuts energy and things of that sort. What about, um, this has been a new phenomenon, glass doors where you can see through them or wrought iron doors, or is there anything to that? Because they seem, uh, when you look at them from the street, they look nice. Yes. But yes. Uh, does that help with anything, what is, or is that really irrelevant relative to the feel of a house when you, you go in. You are really, you've done your homework. You're, you're really good. <laughs> you really know a lot about this. Well, uh, a glass door, uh, first of all, a glass front door, we don't consider the best because it's not a safe 
Safety has a lot to do with what we do with feng shui. Mm -hmm. um, it's very easy to break a front door that's made completely of glass. Also, your privacy mm -hmm. is impaired. Second of all, we, we call a front door uh, made uh, primarily of glass a leakage of chi. In other words, even though the door is closed, it's still open. So energy is escaping all the time. So we prefer that you don't have a glass door. If you have a glass door frosted with wrought iron in it, is that a... If you have if you already have a glass door, we have certain things that we can hang above it or outside of it to counteract the negativity of just the, of the uh, glass door. And this is all subconscious. So you don't realize it until no. you do. No, no. That's the thing that's so extraordinary about this work. Because people say, oh my goodness, the most amazing things have happened and I don't know why. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's my job. I studied four years uh, up in Berkeley with Professor Thomas Lin Yun and I've been doing it for 18 years. So I have clients all over the world and many, many, many happy ones. Well, let so. me ask you something about the inside of a house because yeah. the, big, the big rage here mm -hmm. is um, these kitchens that open up to the living room, but not the rest of the house necessarily. Um, that's been uh, a new last 12 yes, years. That's true. Only because we have children and want to keep an eye on them mm -hmm. and we want to interact with them mm -hmm. because sometimes that's the only time you get a chance to interact mm -hmm. after a long day of work. Um, f flow of a home. Well, basically, um, basically, the flow of a home, it is really a lovely idea to have an opening. Feng shui wise, it's not our our best mm -hmm. because we want to see demarcation lines between a living room, a bathroom, a dining room, a bathroom and a, a, a master bedroom and a bathroom, a kitchen and a family room. Can you do it with carpet versus? You can do it with various over. ways of of moving the energy correctly. That is correct. That is correct. But basically, it's great to have a home that's open that you you know you see if your child playing on the floor while you're cooking dinner. But that's where you get a feng shui energy imbalance that we can correct very subtly. Very, very, subtly, very simply. Very simply. Let's talk about the bedroom. Okay. Um, one of the things it that is someone, a good day to do that. Yes, it is. <laughs> Happy <laughs> Valentine's Day. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, the problem with the bedroom in some cases, there's a TV and it becomes a distraction. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I have a TV in my bedroom. Mm -hmm. um, but there so is. Do I. Yes. And but there's there's. I was told that sometimes that uh, helps uh, inhibit the sleep patterns and in the tranquility of a bedroom. That's absolutely true. I have a TV in my bedroom and I am a feng shui master, but the only difference is that I have the, P the TV closed and closed in a cabinet. So I can watch it at night, and then when it's time to go to sleep, I just close the doors. So there, when you have a TV that's very apparent, that's like, you know, one of those massive, uh, what are they, plaza flat TV, screen TVs, flat screen, yeah. that's up on a wall, what you're really introducing into your bedroom is a third party. Mm. So it, it's, it's a very subtle feeling, but it almost disturbs your sleep in a very subtle way. And it also can mean that there's something or someone else there. So sleep is disturbed. It's a little imbalance of energy right there. And also health can maybe feel a little bit more tired during the day. It, but it's again, it's very subtle. It's a very subtle thing. So if you do have a TV, it's a, just put it in a cabinet. You know, at worst come, uh, comes to worst, just throw a tarp or something over it. Yeah, throw a little blanket you know, or something, yes. Just, yeah. to start like you would a bird. Yeah, very, yeah. <laughs> to sleep the night. <laughs> I want to talk about one last thing. Mm -hmm. I, I get a lot of positive energy when there's sunlight coming into the house. Yes. Um, and outside, backyard in this case, and inside mm -hmm. flow, especially during the summer when it's yeah. nice. Yeah. Tell me about the dynamic of the outdoors and indoors flowing. Well, sunshine is fantastic all, always because that's nature and feng shui is about aligning you with nature. So we love that. Um, brighter is better because the energy is higher. Um, the flow, w what you have to consider when, when I'm doing a home, I look at your, fr the, your front yard, your home, and your backyard. Your front yard, yard is your past. Your home that you're living in is your current, is your current, uh, your, your, you know, right now. And then your uh, backyard is your future. So you want to have a, a backyard that's bigger than your home and your front yard. No, that's hard to do, but that opens so your we're future. We're in Southern yeah. California. Yeah. Which that is hard be to do <laughs> because they love to build these big houses, these little teeny yeah, yeah. yeah. 
But you have ways to help yes, with that, yes, don't you? Yes, we do you? that. Yeah. Yeah. With landscaping, certain ways, certain flowers, certain things to open it up. And Absolutely. It yeah, it brings the beauty. Yeah. Well, those that really like to seek your professionalism and your advice uh, in their home mm -hmm. uh, and in their lives, how can they reach out to you, Elaine? Well, I would love people, who, especially people that are confused about feng shui, I, I would love you to go to my website, which is uh, way, W-A-Y, the number two, and then F E N G S H U I dot com. Also, you can sign up for a free ebook on my website if you'd like to go on there. It's absolutely free, and just you'll download your ebook, and it's how to get wealthy, how to increase your finances with feng shui. So it'd be well, nice. Well, I'm <laughs> going to download that myself so I can get more information. <laughs> but uh, also, uh, Feng Shui for Life uh, Love and the Pursuit of Happiness is That's your my book. book. Yeah. Love, life, and the pursuit of happiness. Thanks for coming in. Thank you so much, Fred. Absolutely. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Elaine Giftis Wright, feng shui expert and the author of Feng Shui for Life, Love, and the Pursuit of Happiness on this Valentine's Day. I uh, well, hope you enjoyed this show of the Santa Cruz Valley Chamber of Commerce Business Spotlight on AM 1220 KHTS.